Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the WTF1 podcast 2020 edition. Whoa. We haven't done one this yet, year. This year, have we? No. This Never. is the beginning. Yeah. And here we are. We're going to talk about the, how should we, your questions answered, I think, is a fair yeah. thing. It's not a pre season podcast. We've got one of those, haven't we, coming? Yeah. Which will be after testing. Yeah. Right? When we know, yeah. we, we know the order because testing yeah. reveals everything. But we are actually recording this before any car launches, bar Mercedes and Haas Mercedes releasing their Libre render. Launch right? and Haas render. So yeah. don't comment because this is going out a week later. Oh, why not? Because why are you talking in, about in the, the past. bright pink? Red Bull and the bright oh, orange yeah. and the silver uh, Ferrari. Silver yeah, Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe that Red Bull didn't do a camo livery? I know, shocker. Maybe they did. We don't know. Anyway, right, mm. let's dive straight into it. Actually, no, before we dive into it, we have to start with I'm Matt. I'm Tommy. I'm Jess. If you didn't know by now. I almost choked on phlegm then. I, <laughs> I, wasn't, really, I wasn't ready. <laughs> We're going to talk about testing first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move it so swiftly on. And it actually will be. I'm actually quite jealous to everyone that's watching right now because it would have been the second day of testing. People will F1 know will the pecking back. order, won't they, Jess? They'll know exactly who is going to be fastest. Absolutely. In it, the is, it is the predictor for the rest of the season. Yeah, you're a big fan of the, the Accurate testing, predictor. right? Accurate yeah, yeah. predictor. You don't get triggered at all. No. Absolutely. I mean, well, let's talk do, about it. When do I ever get triggered? No. Bottas and testing. That's pretty much it. At GPR Burns asks, are you all looking forward to everyone reading way too much into lap times during testing again? Can't wait. Can't wait. Especially the tabloids. They love it. They do love it. Not No yeah. particular tabloid. We yeah. haven't mentioned any off yeah. air, but a lot of them like to jump yeah. on the bandwagon. Don't Hamilton's they? championship title under threat as he is last to leave the pit lane on the first day of <laughs> testing or something like that. That'd be it, wouldn't it? Tommy, I'm interested to get your thoughts of how how accurate, or, or at least how much can you read? What's a, Give me a percentage of how much you think you mm. can read into testing in terms of how accurate it is. 30%. 30? Yeah. Why do you say 30? I know Jessica will say zero. She just whispered it to the mic. Uh, because there is some stuff to be learned. I mean, you could learn the years where, you know, when McLaren had Honda, you knew that things were really, really bad. Because they couldn't get out of the pit lane. Because they couldn't get out of the pit lane. Track, yeah. Um, so there is some stuff to be learned. It's just the people that get the order at the end and go, oh, this is this guy the was fastest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like 2014, Williams were the fastest in testing. How did they end up that season? They did all right. They were third, to be fair. So, so reasonably reliable. Reasonably Good well. testing times, eh, Jess? Yeah, go on. Just for the last four <laughs> years, Ferrari been fastest in all four. Tests and they won all and championships, And Mercedes right? won the championship every year. So Basically, don't believe whoever goes fastest... Will not win. So if Ferrari isn't fast, maybe they look at the trend and they go, we shouldn't be fastest and then we will be fastest yeah. in Australia. I think we've all kind of know that in Australia, Mercedes are going to be fastest no matter what, because that car yeah. seems to be suited to the T around that track. But uh, we've actually made a little list of, of things that people should look out for and people people that should not pay any attention to, basically, yeah, uh, when it comes okay. to testing. So we've got reliability. I think reliability, as you mentioned with McLaren Honda, is the key thing to look at. You know, look at how many laps these teams are doing because that's, uh, you know, a, a pretty big statement if someone does 150 laps or whatever in a day and you go, whoa, yeah. that's big. And Mercedes, they absolutely destroyed last year, didn't they? They yeah. had ridiculous amounts of, uh, of laps done. So that's, in terms of learnings for the team, that's huge for them. You know, aerodynamics, everything, engine uh, and so on. Uh, Buxty and Crofton. Crofton? Crofty? <laughs> I read the sentence far too quickly there. Buxty and Crofton. You can't do it. What are you doing? Buxton and Crofty. Uh, and, and just generally their filling of, of the coverage. Uh, yeah. For, yeah. for so hours doing, and hours and hours. It's, 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 I, I don't know if they're yeah, doing it again. It's a weird so. thing to televise. It's, I'm glad it's televised. It's entertaining it's, yeah, when but, you just haven't seen cars for a while. But it is just so like, so um, here's a car. It's going around. Um, oh, he's coming to the pits. It kind of it kind of turned into last year for me. It turned into a bit of a podcast almost. Yeah. Like you'd have yeah, it on in the background, yeah. and you you look up and be like, okay, cool, they've completed that many laps, or that 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 car's gone fastest this time, and then you just listen to Crofty and whomever chat. And it, the the other thing as well is that they bring other guests into yeah. the commentary box, and it's quite interesting to hear people doing different roles that you wouldn't yeah, necessarily yeah. hear, like and having different opinions and. Usually it's Curran Chantok just correcting Crofty on everything. And but when Buxton and Crofty were in the same room, at first it was like a fight of my head's bigger than your head. Really? Which was just yeah. absolutely fascinating to listen to. Yeah. Um when but, and then they mellowed out F1, next F one driver. Well, yeah, yeah. But then they um they kind of mellowed out a bit. So it was it was quite enjoyable. But it is it's just 
it's a load of nothing really for viewers and fans. Yeah. Like there's nothing really. Yeah. But it's F1, so people yeah. are like, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Or if someone crashes, you yeah. know, That's it's a, big... a chance for Crofty to get Alpha Tauri and Alpha Romeo get that sort of. How is he going? How is he going? It's going to be quite confusing, I think, for yeah, for yeah. watchers. It's such a bad it? name, to be fair. Yeah, like why not just go for anything else? Uh, other things to to look out for. Will Williams actually turn up? Well, we know yeah. it started. Nice. We know the car has started. Does it That's have wheels on sign. it? We will find out. I, yeah. I hope to God Williams actually have some sort of performance this year, especially with our boy Jack Aitken yes. over there now as well, if people haven't heard the news. Jack Aitken over yeah. there. Is, is, his t- is his title's reserve driver, right? He's reserve driver. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, and he'll be doing an FP1 as well, which is very exciting. car time, which is lovely. Wonderful. Um, there's no screens as well. Uh, you can't hide the car anymore in testing, yep. which is going to be... New, new I wonder what, what they'll do instead. I don't know. Just, like, just line mm, with, up with bodies. People, yeah. yeah you we're can't not a screen, we're a I always find it weird that they have the screens up and then every like photographer just gets the picture anyway. So teams what's will know everything yeah. under there anyway and what's, you know, what's going I on. I mean, here. to be honest, if you've not really sorted out your package by that point... Mm. I mean, I, I mean... To be fair, a lot can be done between testing and Australia, I guess. There's like a few weeks, couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, if you've not come to yeah. testing with what you're pretty much going to run. Mm. Maybe it, maybe I'm not being fair, but the I feel like with the age of social media now and everything's there all the time for people to see, I, I don't think there's a chance for people to hide stuff like they used to. Yeah. yeah. Like there was that incident in... 98, I think it was, where someone like stuck their camera down the McLaren and found out they had three pedals and then it started this whole massive like, oh, yeah. hoo-ha over, is this legal, is this not? Yeah. Because of everything going on now, I don't feel like things like that will ever happen again. But interestingly, there's the new um, bit of rule that they've brought in, the FIA have brought in that says that if they find loopholes, the FIA can shut them down by the next yeah, race. Yeah, by the next race, which is very... That's good. for 2021, though, isn't it? Or is it? I thought, didn't it start oh, from I now? Thought, oh. It might be 2021. Oh, I thought it was 2021 regs. Let's just quickly check it out. Yeah. Don't want Jess spouting off anything that's untrue. 2021. It is 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're trying to do everything to stop. Yeah, it, yeah because of, it's because of the rule changes, yeah, isn't it? That's, why, yeah, that's yeah. why they're doing it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so 2021. Still, that's what we're all waiting for, really. 2020 is kind of just a... A me- well, we're all putting it down to a meh season. It's probably going to be a banger, isn't it? After, like, after you all this. say meh. I think it's going to be I, a yeah, banger. It's going to be a banger. I, I hope it's so. going to be really good. But everyone's like, oh, I can't wait for 2021. You, you know, new car. It's going to be so much closer. I, I guarantee we'll have a break. banger of 2020. Everyone will be like, oh, God, why have we got regulation changes now? 2021, the field spread will be ridiculous. But we've, t- we've spoken about it before, haven't we? That when you get to the end of a regulation era, it's you, you're at that sweet spot where everyone's caught up finally. And then you change it again, and then you usually have another team that comes out dominating. Mm. So it, I think it was um, at the Mercedes launch, Toto Wolf was saying that this season is a season of two seasons because you have to complete 2020, but in the background, you are working like mad on 2021. Otherwise, you're going to start behind. Very far behind, yeah. So it's, it's going to be for. interesting. All to play for. Yeah. Let's talk about 2020. Why do you keep highlighting things on my sheet? Because uh, someone has literally asked the very question that you're talking about. So I thought it might be a good time to mention. Oh, okay. Is it, was that you trying to get my, my attention? Yeah. By just like, constantly read, read ah. this. <laughs> at, at it's Alex Marshall says, how, how, uh, how hyped are you that we might possibly have a competitive season for the championship in 2021? So we only have to sit through one more crappy season. Well, right, we saying, don't think I it's going to be well, crappy. I think a lot of people think that it will just be because of the regulations sort of stagnating, I guess. Everyone's sort of caught up now, like Red Bull have finally caught up a bit, Ferrari have caught Mercedes. Mm. And, you know, without sounding doom and gloom, it would not surprise me if we had a three-way title fight with Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes quite close. And then in 2021, Mercedes are like two seconds a lot quicker than everyone. Because it happened in 2013, you know, everyone said, oh, Red Bull needs to stop dominating. Yeah. Or even someone else, yeah. Like, Red Bull needs to stop dominating. Uh Vettel was winning a loads of races and winning the championship every year, but it was really close. Mm. You had a lot of different winners. And then 2014, Mercedes turn up and they're the only car that can win a race yeah, even yeah, close yeah. to. So it could it's, be like that again. It, we'll it, see. Yeah, it's a lot of speculation, isn't it? it but hopefully it's going to be good. Yeah, I, genuinely, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see McLaren closer as well, hopefully. 
um, to the front three. Fingers crossed. That'd be nice to see. Mm. They've got two drivers that are very much firing on all cylinders uh, after last season. So let's dive on to the next question. At A1 to Z, will teams develop their cars over the full season or will they put all of their <coughs> efforts onto the 2021 car? Again, we kind of mentioned that already. Mm. Uh, if a team develops their car longer this year, will it put them in a disadvantage going into 2021? Mm. I guess a lot of the teams, as we've mentioned, will probably be focused on 2021 purely because that's the new regulations. This is only the last year, I, especially the sort of bottom midfield teams where they don't. Yeah, really... although I think I saw a quote from someone, maybe it was McLaren, that said you'd be silly to just sack off the year. Because it's still money at the end mm. of the day. It's prize yeah, yeah. money at the end of the year. And although there will be a budget cap in 2021, you you need... You need that funding yeah. to be able to go racing. So. And also BMW salvaged it in 2008. Yeah, I remember talking about that on that time. Yeah, Kubica yeah. going for a world title and they were like, no, nah, let's just next year. Next year will be quality. <laughs> and then an absolutely <laughs> terrible car the year after. So they not only have a terrible car, they also ruin their chance to have a really mm. good result in the championship the year before. So it's risky. I guess it depends how the start of everyone's seasons go, doesn't it really? If, yeah. if someone has an absolute shocker, Alfa Tori, for example, has an absolute shocking start to the season. They're going to have to put more resource into it to somehow save the prize money at the end of the season. So, I guess to get to a point close, though, with, right. with like Williams, they admitted that they kind of just gave up on last year's car because they were so far behind that they were then mm. focusing on next year and making sure that the problems that they'd had at the start of last season don't then creep into this season and then they can start afresh and hopefully come back way more competitive. So mm. you're right in saying that I think the top teams with all the money and all the investment who have the most to lose by the budget cap are yeah. probably, as I think you said this when we spoke about the 2021 regulations as a whole, they're going to be massively investing now so that they then don't, although I don't know actually, I don't know the legalities of that. whether like They can any, invest as much as they want now. They can. Because that's what everyone's saying that Mercedes could have a huge advantage and Red Bull have a huge advantage yeah. into 2021 anyway because it's like, all right, we'll spend everything, everything now, now and yeah. then you do a budget cap and then all the teams go, well, we can't spend anything to catch up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be interesting. To see Hence why works. it's going to take three, four, five years to even close that gap between... Just like it did this in this era. And then we'll it's... change the regulations and again. And then we'll change the regulations <laughs> again because everyone will complain that it's not fair and that it's too much domination by one team. So uh, okay. F I just swear like... It's the circle of life. It's, it's such a cyclical sport. It's weird. Yeah. Like yeah. like motorsport is so cyclical in not even just F1 as a series, but motorsport in general. And um, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the solutions. I don't know what the, the way around it would be unless you just leave it and don't do massive regulation changes. Mm. But then you risk then losing audiences. and Sport getting a bit stagnant. Exactly and, yeah, that. Yeah. So... It's just one of those things. Double-edged sword, that one. Right, let's go on to uh, a more open-ended question. Uh, at David TH59240061, <laughs> who do you have your bets on winning the Drivers' Championship? Lewis. Well, Hamilton, yeah. No. I think it's got to be, hasn't I, it? I mean, yeah. I don't want him to. Every ounce of my body doesn't want him to purely because of Michael Schumacher's record. Oh, God. Not because yeah. I dislike You're going to be sweating, yeah. aren't you, oh, this my God. entire season? Oh, my God. What Come you, on, Bottas. What will, you, <laughs> <laughs> what will you do if he does equal it? I don't know. I don't want to know what I would do when he equals it, to be honest. Maybe a tear will just... Just one solitary Silently tear. Silently fall. Yeah, there'll be like a, a nice Are you doing IBR? I just... I'll just be one of those fans that goes, Shumi was always the best. Doesn't matter about how many world drivers' championships, blah, 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 blah. I'll just be one, one of those, those blind fanboys. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so we all think Hamilton's for that. I think so. I do. I think it'd be a lot closer, which I'm sure we'll go into later, but I think there's a chance that you mm. know, he, he'll be pushed harder than he was this year. Okay, and this leads us nicely into the next question. At XPLDN Emerald, <laughs> it can Bottas <laughs> finally step up to the challenge of beating Hamilton as promised? Let's start with Jess. Obviously, probably the most neutral when it comes yeah. to Bottas. How do you think Bottas is going to do coming into 2020? He's going to have to bring a lot. To Lots of porridge. He's going to have to eat a lot of porridge, drink a lot of coffee. Um, all the memes. All the memes, all the energy. Gandalf beard. Yeah. All the beard stuff. Like, you know... I think we've said before, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Um, he has <laughs> he has the machinery to beat Lewis. He's just got to bring it on track. And if he's gone away and had another weird winter of prep and he comes back as Bottas 3.0. And wins Australia again. And and wins, think, I mean, yeah, it. he's probably going to win Australia because <laughs> he, that's just probably what's going to happen. Um, but it's whether he can... It is such an endurance 
obviously it's not endurance racing, but it is an endurance series. Mm. You have to be there, bring your A game 22 times a year this yeah, year. There's an yeah. extra race. So he's got it in him. And this is the thing, like people, and again, I've said this before, I'm not bashing on him for any other reason that he's in a top team. The, excuse, the excuses get like less and less mm. yeah, because yeah. if you look, if you think about what would happen if a Leclerc or a Verstappen um, would get into that Mercedes, we'd be having a completely different yeah, conversation yeah, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. Right, at F1 Noob says, which of Ferrari and Red Bull do you think has the best chance to beat Mercedes this year? Oh, that's a toughie. It's I think a... it's got to be Ferrari, hasn't it? Like... Red Bull, I was thinking this, that Red Bull don't start the year strong enough. They started better last year, just yeah. in general, didn't they? And, it still then... took them a while to get up to speed. Mm. And, then, and then at the end they're like on it and you're like oh Max Verstappen because like, I remember the year before everyone was like oh Max could be champion in 2019 yeah and then they're not really there so do you, do you think that there, there will be a year when Red Bull just finally get it and or do you think it's da down to the characteristics of the track that, that they'd never build a car that will be suitable for everything I think they're hoping on a rule change to catch up to be honest yeah 2021 yeah, 2021 yeah but I mean if Red Bull want to challenge for the title, they need to, they need to be challenging from the get go, yeah, not yeah. have like half a year and then start to take the fight down. Well, it's the same with Ferrari though. Last year, when you look at it, <coughs> you know they they were nowhere for the first eight or whatever it was races. Uh, I guess they the had the pace, though, didn't so they? They had the pace. They just never got never. those results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so maybe if Ferrari come out the block stronger, we might have yeah. a title challenge on our hands. That would be nice, wouldn't Yay. it? That'd be lovely. My slight worry is it would be the same as last year where. Mercedes are just consistently good all the way through and then sometimes Ferrari are really good and sometimes Red Bull are really mm. good and they just kind of take points off each other Yeah, and there's no like consistent challenger. We Spoop, shall see. Spoopy Roll, who hey. is uh, one of our big WTF1 fans who does animation and all sorts of amazing things on our Instagram, uh, asks most unexpected rivalry. Now I'm going to go with George Russell versus Nicholas Latifi. Oh. I reckon that would be a spicy one because they've only got themselves to yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe not this year. Hopefully not. But yeah, I think those two. I, I, I'm. J I don't know if it's the most unexpected, or it's just what I would like to see how Russell actually stacks up against someone who is completely able and and ready yeah. to 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 take the fight. Yeah. If Latifi kind of gets one over on Russell, people would be like, okay, it's not as bad as people are mm. making out. Especially when you look at F two, when Latifi wasn't really the same caliber mm. as as Russell uh, when it comes to. I think his, George his is going to absolutely have him for breakfast. Yeah. Well, who would be your most unexpected rival? Mm, I think it's going to be interesting with Ocon back in the mix. Yeah, I think he's he's again he's another one that's kind of he's never like wowed me. He's wowed me a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know. Love you, Esteban. I know. Sorry, I know. But he is super. I've always thought he deserves a seat. Mm. So I don't know. Is he going to be? I don't. I don't hope because I'm pinning Ricardo and Ocon as my new favorite bromance. Yeah, that it stays Ooh. that way. That it stays that way. But I also think, I mean, I think Ricardo's pretty good at managing rivalry. Yeah. In a team. I mean, he's had Max Verstappen and Sebastian yeah. Vettel as teammates, and he's never yeah. really been known as, apart from obviously leaving Red Bull. Leaving Red Bull. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that, like, that didn't feel sour to me. It, mm, felt, no. it felt more like I need. I a new need challenge. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I think they might be a rival because I think they're, they're quite evenly matched mm. as, a, as a pairing. So I'm I'm quite looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Tommy? I'm going to be controversial and say that I reckon if McLaren are good, Lando and Carlos might not be as pally when they start to have podiums that they're fighting for, and and you know they've had that kind of first year where Don't I still think the I still think yeah. there will be there's going to be a point there where you know. Well, yeah, as with, team, as with any, as with any, you know, you see them getting exactly. along. You know, Rosberg and Hamilton, they yeah. were best mates, yeah, and exactly. then they hate each other. So, so, I reckon that there might be a bit of unexpected beef, but I think they will sort it out. Yeah, because they never really ever clashed on track no. either, did they? It's either one's having a great race, the other yeah. one's not, and that was pretty much the story of 2019. I think there could be a moment. But back to Ocon and, and Ricardo, I think it's going to be probably the closest matchup. Yeah, definitely. on the grid. By, by I'm a, excited. Like, I'd, I'd like to think Ocon once he gets his feet fully planted um, will be. The faster yeah. of the two. Um, so we'll see. Interesting. 
<laughs> not, not, not a fanboy. Just, 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 just very passionate. I'm going to be a very passionate man in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at GDNSZN1 says, how will Vietnam and the Netherlands add to the calendar? Two more races. Two more races, <laughs> yeah. I was to say. <laughs> Get out of my head. Um, well, exciting. Just one more one I think more it's race, just it? exciting to have a bit of... Yes, yeah, she just, well, just, yeah, just destroyed both of us then. Right. Um, um, yeah, I think it... I'm looking forward to the Netherlands atmosphere wise. Everyone's sort of slating the track a bit. It's not going to be yeah. great for overtaking. Probably going to have a Monaco where I'm arguing on the podcast that it's great to have this old school track and you guys are like, they can't overtake it. Shit. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we'll see. But yeah, um, Netherlands, I think that's going to be awesome. And Vietnam track does look pretty cool, to be fair. It does. I'm, I'm actually really excited for Vietnam. Yeah. Just because it's so different. Um, we need different tracks. We need different one, tracks. It could it could end up being appalling, but I'm I'm going to be positive about it, and I'm going to be positive about Zandvoort as well, because I know that everyone's kind of like it's going to be crap racing. That but banking though, oh my days, that yeah. looks cool. Hench. I can't wait to see cars fly around that. Yeah, banking. yeah. And I, I think, think it's just going to be good overall for F1 because the Netherlands are such massive fans of F1. They deserve mm. a home yeah. race. It's going to be a an atmosphere that will probably outdo most if yeah. not all F1 oh, races Monza, I think, yeah genuinely honest, I think right? I think yeah. it'd be better that, that... Ooh, do not the Tafosi are going to come after you you know no they won't because I love that I love Charles but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the fan the Dutch fans are absolutely mental and I yeah. think they'll have smoke flares they'll have everything yeah, I think yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. a very Mad. very cool uh, thing but I, I also think that the, the, the racing will be rubbish I think it'll just be like that combination of great atmosphere but probably not great racing and Vietnam as you say different nice to have it on the calendar let's see how the racing unfolds now at Thomas Bunink asks probably one of the most important questions for us as viewers going into the Formula 1 season how often Will Crofty call Alpha Tauri Toro Rosso? And is it pronounced Alpha Tauri or Alpha Tauri? I was going to say it was Alpha Tauri originally until you started saying Alpha Tauri, and I was like, okay, maybe it's Alpha Tauri. So we do some work with Rebel Motorsports, and obviously they are Austrian, and they all say Alpha Tauri, but that's because that's how they say it in their accent. I can hear that in an Austrian accent. Yeah, because yeah. they don't mm. have a tour like vowel sound okay so it's tauri but i think it is if you were saying it with an english accent it's alpha tauri as in taurus yeah but it's alpha be english tauri so yeah after i slated uh, i think <laughs> yeah. like, alpha, alpha tauri but i to, to be honest because i've because i've only ever heard it saying alpha tauri i don't know if i could get it out of my head that it's that anything else but alpha tauri it's just alpha gonna tauri. be it's just such so annoying why are you call yourself alpha yeah why because it's the name of the clothing no. brand. Yeah, but, but, but no, there's another, there's another alpha. alpha. There is it's someone silly. already there. It's silly. They're just have... called AT and the others yeah. are alpha. Yeah. Or just one's Tory, one's It's like the Lotus Romeo. situation. Romeo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you confuse Crofty even more. I know. I mean, how how long do you reckon it will take for him to... to, to I reckon it'll just hit a lot to begin yeah. with. Uh, no, but I it think, depends on the on the livery, I guess. I think he's going to make a point of Alpha Tari. Because I you just want to call Alpha Romeo. Sorry, how often did he call Sport Pace Race one team? Force India. But I, I feel like it's different. Like, I don't know, because... <laughs> it's different, It is not. different. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's different, but it is different. I don't know, maybe... Perfect. One to think about. Yeah. I've just realised that the Zoom thing has been out the entire time. The what? This <laughs> is our equipment. <laughs> We're going to move this. We just... that That is a box of opinions. I, I'd heart failure. I thought you meant, like... It was ours and it's not yeah. turned on. I thought, I like, yeah, I was like, we haven't been recording this whole time. Oh my God. I think it's no. a fantastic time anyway. to bring up our sponsored shout out for this podcast. We've had it a few times now already for the 2019 season and uh, it's Expre Express VPN. Yay. Now, if you're a regular listener watcher, you will, as you, you, know, you will have heard of it and Jess especially because it's your favorite place to, to use, place to use, app to use. Because uh, it allows you to watch your favorite shows wherever you are. Wherever I am. Where, where were you when you've used it? Uh, Mexico, we used it a lot. Nice. Basically, anywhere you travel, if if you're having trouble getting back onto either Netflix to watch UK-based shows, or if you're in the UK and you want to watch US-based shows, yeah, it's a it's, very cheeky way of getting yeah, everything. Because it hasn't, you know, it can fool Netflix, and a lot of the VPNs don't fool Netflix. It's so. good because when we're away, and sometimes I'll go on like BBC Sport, or whatever, and it will have like a, a video to play, and I'm like, oh, come oh, on, they're blocked on this country. Whereas, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or, or you know, we've said before, you can watch Ziggo Sport 
yes. like clips and stuff yeah, on so Twitter. Annoying. I'm like, oh, look at this amazing clip. Can't watch it. Yeah, everyone's retweeting. It's like, oh, this is really funny. You're like, oh, I can't watch it with ExpressVPN. They're all, they're all ExpressVPN users, the you one that are retweeting it. They are. So ExpressVPN lets you easily bypass pesky geo restrictions and you can get set up in under 10 minutes and start enjoying HD streams that were currently blocked from you, such as Ziggo Sport on Twitter. Uh, it works on your computer, phone, rota- router, router. Is it router or router? Ooh, router, I think. Towery. If you're... <laughs> <laughs> phone, towery and consoles. <laughs> router and consoles, as well as services like Fire TV so you can watch from pretty much any device you like. Browse with peace of mind safely that the app will be encrypting all your data, keeping it safe from those pesky hackers. If you look like you're about to say something to me. No. What are you going to say? I just like the no. pesky hackers. Like those pesky kids. I want to go away with yeah. it. Oh, we're showing our age now, aren't we, with Scooby-Doo? <laughs> it... I bet people... I wonder how many people don't know who Scooby-Doo is. Probably not. Scooby-Doo. Don't if you sing. want to get involved, which I'd seriously <laughs> recommend, especially as you, if you travel like, like we do, uh, you can use the, our special link today to get three months free at expressvpn.com forward slash WTF1. That's expressvpn.com forward slash WTF1 for three months free with a one-year package. Head over to the link to learn more. Beautiful. There you go. Go click the link. Do it now. Do it. It yeah. supports us. It yeah. supports yeah. us. It helps us support. do this stuff. Okay. So thank you. Right now, let's look ahead to the 2020, 2021 our predictions. predictions. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna put our money where our mouth is now. Are we actually putting money down? I don't think we are. No. no. I was gonna say. <laughs> I do not want to don't want to don't eat gamble, money. kids. I don't want to eat money. <laughs> At Outrun, if Hamilton wins the title again this year, who is the most likely to finally stop his title run, or will he retire before that happens, Charlotte Claire? Oof. No, nah, was definitely. Oh, shut up, you fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bottas. deciding. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. It should be, but no. Um, oof. George Russell when he takes the seat in 2021. Yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? Because I think it's going to be Leclerc. It's one of those things where people are, are saying it's Leclerc or Verstappen. It should Leclerc. be either of them. It's well, Leclerc yeah, or Leclerc. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was neither of them and someone, Just someone in a few years' new. time, someone like Lando I mean, or whatever, yeah, like old George Russell, yeah, 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 to Mercedes. Yeah, he has a few years at some. It was a bit like when Shumi was Bottom dominating, team. right? And everyone was like, Kimi Raikkonen and Montoya. It's going to be Kimi Raikkonen and Montoya. And then Alonso just appears out of nowhere. And oh, maybe. Yeah. I guess that's that, that, the, the, yeah, the intriguing thing is that there will likely be a seat in Mercedes. Because everyone's, yeah. everyone's complaining that, oh, no, the 2021 silly season's already wrapped up because Max and Leclerc have already got their Signed, deals. Yeah. And mm. it's not even the 2020 season yet. But that's going to play... There is still a lot to be played for mm. because... As the next, I won't jump ahead to the next question, but there could be drivers leaving. A few seats. Bottas as well. He's not. He's not safe. He yeah. only gets one year deals because yeah. it's all based on performance. I'm pretty sure they would do one race deals if they could at Mercedes yeah. for Bottas, couldn't they? Just like. <laughs> and they say you hey. savage. Hey, hey. yeah, hey. I'm not saying this. Hey. You are hey. Matt. Hey. Uh, at skews underscore Daniel says, could this be Vettel's last year? Yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think he's. I think he's done. Unless he comes out and wins the championship, I think he's done. Yeah, it's it's a big year for him. It's I a think. big year. Yeah, he needs to step up. I think we'll I know. Don't think he will. I think we'll know pretty soon whether he's checked out in his head. Because if he's fully, is in, he going to be Vettel two point oh? No, oh, no. Have a beer. He's been having porridge. The no. porridge. All the. Oh, that's what I can't wait to see. Silly haircuts. Yes, his aerodynamic haircut. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Always for the first race of the season. That was for very Either strange, a wasn't. tash or... Just something. I can't wait. We I cannot will, wait. We, we say about him being washed up, but he genuinely is one of the best drivers in terms of personalities Hugely. on the grid. And the best driver. And the best driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah, terms yeah. of the performance. When he's well, on he's it, a, he's on it. But and he's a world champion. We, we do, we do, he's yeah. not on so it So we said it's consistency is key, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've got 22 races a year to... And it's who wins the most. Mm-hmm. That is Formula One, yes. <laughs> in a you nutshell, are all summed welcome. up. Beautiful. <laughs> Will any teams leave in 2021? Yes. It's, yeah, but it's, it's all speculation, isn't it? Mm. It's like what have you heard? Uh, when you put well, your ear to the floor, what do you hear? I I don't want to make a big bold claim right. because it, well, Rene. Um, WTF1 has learned. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, no, we've not learned. We are Tommy. making we have wild from speculations Tommy. here. I know Rene say they're going to go into 2021. It's just because when's Ocon's deal till 2021, I think. I thought it was like, wasn't it later than that? Oh, he's Here's got a two year deal, he's got a two year deal, so yeah, till 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's gonna be 
2021 is going to be really interesting to see who stays and goes because there's this whole there was this whole rumor about Mercedes going, and then you know they've even squashed when that, haven't they? They were yeah, their sponsor. Their sponsor deal. Yeah. <sighs> but a deal is like yeah. a deal. A deal. <laughs> Deals can be broken. Yeah, yeah. We don't so, know what's in those uh, those clauses. And they keep obviously like the whole um, idea of Toto maybe taking on a different role. I mean, he kind of tried to downplay it by saying he's a partner in the team. Mm. So unlike any other team principal, he actually owns part of the company. Mm. So, but that doesn't mean that he's going to stay team no. principal. Yeah. No, that it means that he will always have input on the Mercedes team should yeah. it stay. But it's not. He's not necessarily going to be team principal. So, whilst I think. We can speculate all we want and we won't know until we know. It's a case of, you know, there are possibilities out there. It's not all like lockdown and... And like we said, even if Mercedes left, you know, you've got a whole Formula One operation there that they're not going to just say, nah. Mm. Well, it's like we, don't, our... we don't fancy this. Yeah, the history of teams. Yeah. You know, someone might come along just like um, Racing Point did and Aston Martin are doing with... Yeah. Um, racing point and you know there, there might be some rich billionaire that goes yeah let's Brackley GP let's have it Alpha, let's, let's, Alpha, yeah. Alpha Tauri is technically yeah. Minardi yeah. so yeah. you know it, they, racing teams don't tend to die they just they evolve just, they just evolve yeah. they get yeah. bought by somebody else and, and they'll probably be called Alpha Racing or something and we'll go no there's three Alphas this yeah. is getting ridiculous <laughs> Alpha Beta Racing Alpha yeah. Beta <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's like, let's turn our attention to the, to our predictions for the season. Mm. We'd have two each, even though apparently Jess has three according oh, I'm, to uh, I'm the pick, sheet. I'm picking which one I want right, to go. Uh, right, right at the last minute. Wow. Okay, Tommy, let's start with your two predictions for the 2020 season. We've gone bold. Four different winners in the first four races. Yeah, I read that and I was like, come on. Really? Come on. Oh, what are you talking about? What, so you reckon it'll be Bottas, Hamilton, Charlotte? Bo- uh, so, Charlotte, yeah. Verstappen, yeah. Oh, and Verstappen. No Vettel. Poor Vettel. Oh, no. Jeez. Um, Don't be silly. We might have just sung his praises, but he ain't winning a race. Yeah, in the first no, don't four. be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I reckon there'll be four different winners in the first four races when Hamilton's yeah not showing up. I think it'd be, and this goes on to my next prediction. I reckon it'd be the opposite of last year, where it's super close at the start, and then Hamilton's like, yeah, I should probably start winning now, and then just cane it. And then he wins the title in Brazil. So not quite at the finish. Okay. Because interesting, because uh, you've gone for let, let's uh, let's go for so your four different winners in four first first four races. Let's let's do some bonus points. Who are those four uh, winners? Ooh. In, order, in order. In order. Okay, Bottas ooh. wins the first race. Yeah. Then what have we got next? Uh, Bahrain. 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 So that'd be Leclerc. You just you just repeating what should have happened last. Yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> and then Vietnam, which will be Verstappen. Yeah. And then China, China's which will be happen. no one. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry. Okay. Uh, no, Hamilton will win Vietnam, and then oh, Hamilton. And then Max is going to win at Zandvoort. Just for oh the, my just for god, the, story. the, um, the and you're, memes. And, and you're then, going. You're going on that the Chinese Grand Prix will be cancelled. Yeah, and you'll be able to, to literally to hear it. Holland from wherever you are in the world. <laughs> 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 okay, so those are your two predictions. That would be brilliant. I'd I be totally it, yeah. on board for that as a as the first four races. Yeah, let's you do it. If okay, it happens, cool. you will, you get. <laughs> Who a... wouldn't Vettel fans? Yes, probably. If that comes through with now. the extra points, I think you win the season. Okay, That's win the season. Win. You literally we win every turn up for any more. No, no, no. You yeah, don't okay. have to come to any other podcasts. Cool, sweet. Uh, my two are Ferrari will be leading the title halfway through the season. Okay, okay. I'm down Just wishful that. thinking more than anything else, but yeah. Anyway, and we will have a title finale. So you think it's going to go down? To down Abu to the Dhabi. wire. It's going to Abu Dhabi. It's going to Abu yep. Dhabi. Yes, it is. Between who? Oh, here my. we go. Yeah, here bonus bonus points. Oh, God, right now. Okay, fanboy brain needs to turn off a second. <laughs> Shall not, Shall not. <laughs> Passionate brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, of course. Um, I think it will be between Leclerc and Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hamilton and Leclerc. Come on, anonymous chameleon, right? <laughs> Hamilton and Leclerc. Okay. I, I would, uh, if that actually happened, I would. Can you imagine? We would have scenes. to watch the race together. We yeah, actually we would. would have to yeah, because yeah. I would internally combust if Leclerc's yeah. winning. Uh, imagine if race. it was a three-way title fight between Verstappen, and Leclerc, and Hamilton. Then we couldn't. Then we, we couldn't we'll sit together. Watch. No. If it was a, if it was a three-way title battle between Bottas, Leclerc, and Verstappen. That reminds me. <laughs> no. When um, back in 2012, Dan, our uh, 
website writer is a massive <laughs> yeah, <laughs> website, website writer <laughs> yeah editor yeah. um He's massive a- like diehard alonso fan and this is when i was a diehard vettel fan and yeah. we nearly met up and watched brazil 2012 oh together can you imagine how much God. we'd have fallen out during that you race you would have been absolutely raging right he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be working for no. WTF <laughs> no, would he? No, no. <laughs> give us your two predictions uh okay so my first one is the closest fight for the top of the hybrid era yeah. Now, that actually, now thinking about it, is a pretty big statement considering 2016 is counted in there. Mm. And yeah, what, was the, point, what was the point difference? That doesn't count because it's the same two drivers. Oh, okay. Does it not? Apparently it doesn't count. Well, are you on about... You, uh, I thought you were on about take between it, teams. Take, or, it, take it how no. you oh, oh, Just flake. doing a very airy, like, there will be races. Just gets three flaky. There will be races that happen. Why? Why are the two aren't flaky? <laughs> why have you got two? Yeah, why have you got three? Well, oh, because I one? couldn't... Um, so closest fight for the top. Okay, right, between okay. Who? who? Between who? What okay. is the fight for the top? All right. You need bonus points here. I'm. I think. I think it will be a three-way battle between Lewis, Leclerc, and Verstappen. Cool. I mean, yes, please. I mean, yes. Hamilton, Leclerc, and Verstappen because Lewis and I are not on first name terms. If, are you not? Oh, what a shame. if that happens, we'll live stream the finale of our us reacting to it. <laughs> Could you imagine? That would be amazing. We're going to fall out. Yeah, we are. Um, <laughs> and what's the second one? Which one are you going oh, for? Which one should I go for? Uh, the, sec- the, the, the last one. The last one? Yeah. Do you reckon? Because I don't think there's anything Only more because... annoying for you than, than the, that one. That, this is true. And it's all subject. That one's subjective. We'll read it out anyway. So, my, so the one that I'm not going to count was someone will come up with a more annoying meme than it's race week. I don't think I've ever seen anyone more triggered about it's race week in my entire life. So I don't think there is anything that would come up. I know. And I th- Did you see I got personally attacked by Formula E? No. They like... They they purposefully posted like a, you know what week it is type meme Good. after I'd posted about how much I hated like I tweeted about that how much me, I hated that it. makes me happy. Good times. Um, and then they replied to me saying um, it's race week actually. Oh wow, that's a combination. Oh, that so as that was well, yeah, that's a combination that was, meme. That's, they, I'm they not sure how I feel a, about that. That's a big oof. They went right. for a, a double double whammy. So okay, the one I'm going to go for is Bottas will no give no longer. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no give. give. I can't, yeah, doing me. Yeah, exactly. I can't <laughs> even say this. It's so. Big. Um, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and we're and back. We're back. Oh, um, Bottas, I'm gonna say, Bottas will no longer give me a reason to bash him. Okay. Yeah. Whatever, actually, again, another very airy one. It could just be Bottas comes be out good. and says, I really like people's names beginning with J. And you'll be like, what a great guy. We're friends. No, yeah. because he could say that anyway and I'd still bash him. <laughs> It's all about <laughs> anyway. Fan predictions. Fans. Fans. Yeah, fans. Let's move quickly. Okay, quickly. apparently Pedro Varadi has. All right, we're, we're doing this purely this is because strong. this is strong. There's six predictions in here, but he will only get a point if he gets all of them. That's yeah. how I'm. You know, not even a half a point. That's how the game. Hamilton works, will Pedro. be world championship. World championship again. Hamilton <laughs> will be world champion again. Yeah. Science will get his maiden win. No, nope. <laughs> chill out. Norris will get his maiden podium. Renault will get its maiden podium since its return to F1. Williams won't be last, in brackets, I hope so. And Red Bull will beat Ferrari. There are some very bold predictions. He's, yeah, gone, for really sa- he's gone for a really safe one and then gone like... How to be champion? Uh, yeah, Russell, Sainz will win. Russell champion, maybe. Uh, <laughs> also, Williams, Williams, won't, Williams won't be last. Does that mean like... That's kind of relying on Haas mucking it up. Or oh, Alpha Tauri's so Alpha busy Tauri. about talking about their name that they forget to do a car. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Just don't yeah. bring they just release. Car. They just release Damn it. some clothes. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah. Let's do, fa- do fashion shows up and down the paddock just 24-7. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually quite hopeful for their livery. I think it'll, yeah. from their teasers, it looks if, like it could be If it's nice. a repeat of the Toro Rosso livery. Everyone be few. Yeah, be I will. Yeah, yeah. Especially but we profit. will get a point on our bingo, so... We will. Okay, we uh, will. okay other ones. Uh, Plotsky Jason says Max Verstappen will win more races than Bottas, Leclerc and Vettel combined. Nah. Nah. Get in the bin. That's quite, that's a bold one. That's very More bold. races than... More races than Vettel. More races than... <laughs> and I Bottas combined. We'll win maybe. more than yeah. Bottas and Vettel combined. Fair. Absolutely. I could, that'll be hard I could see Bottas having another... Shocker. 2018 where he wins one and Hamilton wins ten. Fair. Uh, Samagara 4 says six teams will get a podium. <sighs> that's bold. That's very bold. That's very bold. We need, we'll need a few Germanys. No, we'll yeah. wait for that. And finally, Moyes192 says at least one driver will lose his seat. Savage. I think that's pretty reasonable. I thought that, but then I was looking at the... And I can't really see anyone. <laughs> Did you just headbutt your mic? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I'm not it. used to these new stands. They're know, all yeah. like fancy. fancy new stands for 2020. Yeah. We don't say we don't treat you, right? Uh-huh. Cool. We're done. <laughs> Are we done? Thank you so much for watching slash listening to this WTF1 first podcast of 2020. Of course, check out ExpressVPN, uh, our wonderful sponsors for this episode. And that is it. 
we're done until pre-season testing podcast correct yes yeah well yeah we'll yeah. be looking ahead to australia yeah looking ahead F one's kind of back though, right? It will be when this goes out, and everyone's yeah. going to be. Oh, yeah, everyone's going to be raging. Country. We haven't spoken about Let it. Remember, this is we're going. in the past. We're a week in the past. Anyway, take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye.